Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another transcribed program with a cast of outstanding players and featuring as Anne Cunningham, Patsy Campbell. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail gallant American women. This is the story of women who have helped to develop the American way of life. Daughters of destiny, mothers of might, co-makers of history, written large upon the honor rolls of our nation's great. Women courageous who have served and sacrificed, worked and dreamed, pioneered and persevered. Women whose names, deeds, and claims to fame have often been forgotten. This is their story, and it is your story. Three centuries of women whose deeds are rooted deep in our past and whose influence will reach far into the future. It's the story of you, the pioneer women of today, who are blazing the trails of tomorrow. After this important message, our first act curtain will rise. Before this exciting story begins, a story about courageous American women in the past, I'd like to say a few words about courageous American women of the present who are serving their country as service women alongside the men in the United States Army and United States Air Force. These women will have the gratifying knowledge that they'll be writing new pages in the history book during one of the most critical periods in our nation's history. You can join these women by volunteering in the WAC, Women's Army Corps, or in the WAF, Women in the Air Force. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and enlist now. Today we bring you the story of women who have made history by preserving it. Women who have dedicated themselves to the simple principle that our dead have not died in vain, and that the cement of our union, the binding quality of our nation, is the patriotism of its people. This then is the story of tradition kept alive, the story of the women who saved Mount Vernon. This might have been your breakfast table three weeks ago. More coffee, John? Mm. Coffee. Would you like another cup? Oh, yes, yes, please. Darling, would you mind very much if I asked you once again not to read at the table? Please. Well, why not? No one's around. No. That is, no one but me. Ma? Uh, never mind. Will you look at this? How can I? What is it? Oh, listen. This will make your hair stand on end. Fredericksburg, Virginia, February 2nd, 1952. George Washington's boyhood home, Ferry Farm, will be sold at public auction at 11 a.m. Saturday. It was at Ferry Farm that Washington is said to have performed the legendary feats of chopping down the cherry tree and hurling a silver dollar across the Rappahannock River. Now, can you tie that? I think that's dreadful. Letting an historic place like that come up at public auction. You know, something should be done about well, it. You're right, absolutely, but what can be done? Well, I don't know exactly, but I, I think it should be preserved for future generations. Something should be done about it. Well, look at what they did to Mount Vernon. Look at what who did to Mount Vernon. Why, the government. John, dear, the government had very little to do with the saving of Mount Vernon. But I... Mount Vernon was once well on the road to the same fate as now faces Ferry Farm. But it was saved just at the last moment. Is that so? Who saved it? A gallant woman from South Carolina. And Pamela Cunningham. <laughs> I see where the Democratic Convention in Baltimore has approved the Compromise of 1850. <laughs> Maybe now we'll get a little peace from the abolitionists. I'm 
I've got $500 that Franklin Pierce will beat the pants off of Daniel Webster. Any takers? Well, speak up. Any takers? Good evening, Captain Josephs. Beautiful night, Mrs. Cunningham. Yes, it is. Oh, come now. The moon is much too bright for so sad an expression. I'm sorry, but leaving my daughter, Ann Pamela, sick and alone in Philadelphia was a hard thing to do. She'll be better off there under the doctor's care. She's so frail, so weak. Does uh, the doctor think that, well, that someday she may walk again? Well, it's too soon to tell yet. I'm sure everything possible will be done for her, ma'am. It'll be very lonesome at our home without Ann Pamela. Rosemont will be empty. Now, what's that? We're passing Mount Vernon. Oh. The custom for all boats going up and down the Potomac to sound their bells at this point. Now, isn't that an excellent custom? Oh, look. The moon's so bright we can see the buildings. Beautiful, aren't they? The uh, moonlight is kind to Mount Vernon. Kind? Yes, it's not so pretty during the day. The house is shabby. The ground's almost untended. But that, that sounds impossible. Well, I stayed there for over a week with my two daughters uh, ten years ago, 1842. Everything was going well then. Times are harder now, and Mount Vernon is paying the penalty for years and years of growing a single crop, cotton. The land is dead. Dead? That land dead? Oh, if that land is dead, Captain Josephs, our country's dead. Why, its tradition is sacred within Mount Vernon's walls. Yes. Tradition never paid a bill, and Mount Vernon has many. I've talked to Mr. John Washington about it many times. He tells me that over 10,000 people visit it yearly. And no greater tribute could be paid to General Washington. Very true, but these visitors are offered the hospitality of the plantation. Now, that means food, linens, money. As John Washington has said, everything is lavish at Mount Vernon, except the land. But then why doesn't the government buy it? I don't know. It's been offered uh, both to the United States government and to the Commonwealth of Virginia. But they have not been willing to purchase it. Is there a price on it? Oh, yes. A hundred thousand dollars. That is a large sum of money for 200 acres of poor land, having nothing of value on it except a group of ancient and dilapidated buildings. Captain Josephs, there's a treasure on that land, the greatest treasure this country possesses. The body of the man who gave us our democracy and the ground he loved so well. Why, any price would be cheap for such a, a hallowed spot. Too bad there aren't more patriots like you, Mrs. Cunningham. There are more than you dream of, Captain Josephs. My daughter Anne is one. We've passed Mount Vernon. Yes, we go by, but Mount Vernon stays, as it will always stay. Quiet, serene, peaceful. The spirit of America is beyond that bend, Captain Josephs. And something tells me it'll always be there, sacred to the man who built a nation and a home. And both must never die. What can we do about it? Well, I don't know, sir. I don't know. But maybe Anne will know. Yeah, I'll write to her. Oh, Lizzie. Yes, sir? Will you answer that, please? Yes, sir. Hello, Lizzie. Why, if it isn't Miss Campbell. My, my, you look pretty. Thank you, Lizzie. I am. Oh, Virginia Campbell, come in, dear. I'll take your wraps, Miss. Thank you. And, dear, how are you? Much better, thank you. Well, for pity's sakes, you're, you're... Out of bed? Yes, I am. I'm out of bed, and I intend to stay out of bed. But the doctor said... Oh, <laughs> Miss Virginia, she don't care no how what the doctor says. <laughs> well, that's right. But, Aunt dear... Oh, come, sit down beside me. Uh, Lizzie, fetch some tea. Yes, sir. I will say this. I've never seen you look so well, Aunt Pamela Cunningham. <laughs> What's all this about? This is about a letter. A letter I received yesterday. A letter? Mm-hmm. From who? Mother. Well, she's safe at home at Rosemont. Well, of course, that's a weight off your oh, mind. Oh, hush, hush. Let me read you the letter. I have it here. Oh, pull the curtains up a bit, please. Of course, dear. Oh, thank you. Now, listen. My dear Anne, here I am, safe again back home. I wish you were with me, dear. Oh, and so on and so on. Um, oh, now listen to this. On the boat down the Potomac from the capital, we passed Mount Vernon. My dear, I'm glad you were not with me. It is not a glad sight to see. 
the buildings dilapidated, the grounds overgrown, all in a bad state of disrepair. And now I hear that the entire estate is, is to be sold soon and may fall into the hands of speculators. Oh, dear. It is all so wrong something should be done to save this famous home where Washington lies buried. Somehow I feel that if the government cannot save it, then someone else should. I don't know who. Darling, what can be done? Who can save Mount Vernon? But Anne... Who can save Mount Vernon? I will save Mount Vernon. I will do it. Anne, dear, what are you saying? I'm going to save Mount Vernon. But, dear, you mustn't even think of such things. You're supposed to rest, be quiet. The doctor says... Virginia, this letter marks the renaissance of Anne Pamela Cunningham. Yesterday I was lying in that bed, lying and helplessly watching my life slip away, not caring much if the end would come this year or next. But now, now I have a reason for living, a reason to want to live. I have a mission, Virginia, a wonderful mission. You can't do this. It'll kill you. No, it won't. It'll make me live. I have a task to perform now. It's a big task, but I'll do it. I'll save Mount Vernon. But how can you? I'll go back from Philadelphia to South Carolina at once to begin my task. I'll, I'll call on every woman in the land to help me. And they will, too. Darling, I can't let you do it. Well, I've already written an appeal that I shall circulate through every city, town, and hamlet. I've signed it, the Southern Matron, because, as you know, no gentlewoman could allow a name to appear in the public prints. Oh, but here, let me read it to you. All right. Here. An appeal for the purchase and future preservation of the home and grave of George Washington. Washington belongs to our whole country, though he lies and must lie in his mother's womb. Anne Pamela Cunningham's appeal swept the country. Women everywhere heard her plea. In the South, her words were read. Can a tribute never rendered before to mortal man, such a tribute as we now plead for, wipe out such a blot as this? To a woman on such a mission, no heart, no purse. And in the north, her words struck home. And in all coming time, every pilgrim to that hallowed shrine from the remotest regions of the earth can there learn who did this deed of love. Signed, a southern matron. <laughs> And among the thousands who answered Anne Pamela Cunningham's appeal, there was one who saw in her campaign more than a mere reconstruction of a shrine. This woman was then fighting a great battle of peace to keep the North and South a united nation. She foresaw the coming conflict and looked upon Anne Cunningham's campaign to save Mount Vernon as a campaign to save the Union. Her name was Sarah Josepha Hale, editor of Godey's Ladies Book. <laughs> Is Mrs. Hale in her office? Uh, why, uh, well, yes, Mr. Goldie. Thank you. Who that breathes the free air of our republic? Oh. Uh, good day, Mr. Goldie. Uh, Mrs. Hale, I... Just a uh, moment, please, while I finish this dictation. Who that breathes the free air of our republic does not feel that where Washington lived and died is the holiest spot in all our land. <laughs> ah, yes, Mr. Godey. I've just seen the proofs of the new edition of Ladies' Book. Yes. They won't do, won't do at all. They're impossible. Really? This campaign of this, uh, oh, what's her name, this southern matron to save Mount Vernon and all that, it's a fine idea, no doubt. But I don't think we have any place in it. Oh? Why, it smacks what? too much of the South. In view of the circumstances, I think it's, well, injudicious. Injudicious. Exactly. Hmm. Mr. Godey, I accepted the editorship of the ladies' book under the very explicit condition that I was to have complete control of the editorial policy. I know that, and you've done a superb piece of work. Thank you. I intend to keep it up. Oh, but really now, there's no earthly reason to get mixed up in the campaign of, of this southern matron. There is an excellent reason. Our nation is tottering on the brink of an abyss being pushed into it by men. If anyone can save us from this horrible fate, it's the women of America. True, true, but what about our northern readers? Northern women are no different from southern women. They all hate war equally. Oh, I don't know. Well, I do. Mr. Godey, we're going ahead with this campaign. 
Under the leadership of the Southern matron, we are going to save Mount Vernon and perhaps help save the Union. Well, it's a big campaign. Yes. Yes, it is. A very big campaign. Good day, Mr. Godey. Oh. Now, Mary, we'll continue. Let's see. Oh, yes. Take this down. We want contributions from every section. We want the daughters of the North to come with rich gifts and join their sisters of the South as the brave patriots of both regions united in the glorious war of the revolution. Washington's fame belongs to the whole country. His name is the holy cement of our union. The editors of the ladies' book hope to interest every friend of theirs in this effort of national patriotism. Patsy Campbell, featured as Anne Cunningham in the proudly we hail production of Gallant American Women, will return in just a moment for the second act. Love and loyalty to one's country have never been the exclusive attributes of men. Women, too, have given concrete evidence of their devotion and courage. Now, more than ever before, the services of women are urgently needed to undertake thousands of jobs in the armed forces where a critical manpower shortage threatens the defense effort. More than ever before, the United States Army and United States Air Force need young women in its expanding forces. So go to your nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station. Have a talk with a recruiting sergeant. He will help you decide how you can best serve your country. Volunteer for service in the WAC, Women's Army Corps, or the WAF, Women in the Air Force, today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Gallant American Women. Miss Cunningham, you've got to stop this. I demand it. All your friends here in Richmond demand it. You've got to rest. Oh, Lizzie, bring me that list of contributions from the women of New Jersey and that letter from Miss Sarah Joseph Hale. Yes, sir. Miss Cunningham, I refuse to be responsible. As your doctor, I insist that you return to bed at once. And so does your assistant, and she's just as anxious as you oh, to save Mount thank Vernon. Thank you very much, my desk. Miss Cunningham, why don't you listen to Dr. McGregor? Come here, Doctor. Young lady, will you stop this nonsense? Please come over here, Doctor. All right. What is it? Look here. Look at these letters and messages from every state of the Union. Ever since my very first message, I've been swamped with thousands and thousands of contributions to our cause. Look here. This is all very well, but you are not up to the task. Now, why can't someone else pick up the thread? Let someone else be president of this, uh, this... Mount Vernon Ladies' Association of the Union. Y yes, whatever it is. But you are to stop this work at once. No, Dr. McGregor. I insist. I intend to go on. It will kill you. You're wrong, Doctor. It will make me live. From every state of the Union, women offered their help. Even Edward Everett, the great orator, dedicated the proceeds of his lecture on Washington to the cause and became Miss Cunningham's eloquent champion. The campaign started slowly, gained impetus, and soon was sweeping the nation. Come in, come in. Oh, Doctor, Lordy, I'm glad to see you. What's the matter? What's happened, Miss Anne? Oh, Doctor, I'm just one big lump of mush for a fact. I'm so worried about her. What's happened to Miss Anne? I had to send for you. I did my best. Lizzie, now where's Miss Anne and what's happened? Miss Anne's gone out of her mind for a fact. She's so weak she can hardly keep her eyes open. And you know what? What? She's made up her mind to go traipsing around again. She's leaving Richmond for Mount Vernon. And I can't stop her. You got to stop her, Doctor. You just got to. Where is she? In her room upstairs. Don't you worry, Lizzie. I'll stop her. Yes? May I come in? Yes. 
Miss Cunningham, what is this? Please sit down, Doctor. But I want Please to... sit down. Oh, very well. Five years, Doctor. Five years we spent planning and working the women of America. Working to save Mount Vernon for America. Five years now. Please, Miss Cunningham. It was a grueling fight, but never heartbreaking. Because we knew our cause was a great one. For the first time, the women of our nation united together in one common campaign to save Mount Vernon. It was a tremendous undertaking, first, I know. they said we couldn't get the money. Well, we collected it. Yes, I know. Then they said... Then they said Virginia would never let us buy the land. But the state of Virginia is willing now to incorporate us. You didn't know that, did you, Doctor? No, I didn't. Everything seemed settled. Sure. But... Now, what's happened? Mr. John Washington refuses to sell. You can't mean He refuses that. to sell Mount Vernon to us. But why? Why? Because he somehow received the impression that the Mount Vernon Ladies Association and the General Assembly of the State of Virginia have united to reflect on him. But that's nonsense. Of course it is. But rumors have been flying around, slanders against me personally, against the association. Doctor... Doctor, he must sell. Well, evidently, his mind is made up. But he must be told the truth. So I'm going to Mount Vernon. You are not. You're not leaving this room. I'm going. But you can't. Train ride in your condition would be fatal. I'll go by boat. No, you mustn't. But I must. Miss Cunningham, please, for the sake of your mother, listen to me. You, you can't go. Can't? That's a strange word to me, Doctor. First, I can't gather the women of America around me. Then I can't raise enough money. Then I can't get the Commonwealth of Virginia to grant the association a charter. But I did all these things. And now you say I can't go to Mount Vernon. That's a challenge, Doctor. You should know better than to challenge a woman. If you go, now mark this, Anne Pamela Cunningham. If you so much as step out of this room, you'll sign your own death certificate. Now, I am serious. So am I. And I'll sign no death certificate before I sign the deed that will place Mount Vernon in the hands of the women of America. Lizzie? Yes, sir? Lizzie, start packing. We're going. You're going to your death. I warn you. Mr. Washington, as his descendant, don't you now agree that General Washington would have wished it to be this way? Miss Cunningham, you've convinced me that there has been a misunderstanding, and I am sorry. Oh, but it isn't I. I'm not the one to be considered. It's the women of this country, Mr. Washington. They've worked so hard. They've given so much. Let them, let them do their part to keep Mount Vernon for the people. Now, you're a brave woman, Miss Cunningham. And a very gallant lady. No more gallant than any of the thousands who have joined me in this great mission. Or you must let me buy Mount Vernon. Well, I think... I think General Washington might have agreed with you. He would have. He would have wanted it, I know. Oh... Let us have it. We'll guard it well. I'm sure you will. Well, then... Then... Have the agreement drawn up, Miss Cunningham. I... I've come prepared. I've already had an agreement drawn up. And I have brought it with me. Oh, uh... May I see it, please? Oh, yes. Here it is, Mr. Washington. Thank you. Well, you seem to have overlooked nothing, Miss Cunningham. Then you... you... Yes. Yes, I've made up my mind to sign. Oh. Now, let me see. I, I suppose you want me to sign here at the bottom of the page? Yes, if you please. 
There, Miss Cunningham. It's done. Now it's your turn to sign for the Mount Vernon Ladies Association. Yes, it's... It's my turn now. May I have the pen, please? Oh, yes, of course, here it is. This must be a great moment for you. It is not only a great moment for me, Mr. Washington. It is a great moment for the whole nation. And so Mount Vernon passed from the hands of the heirs of George Washington to the women of the country. The ladies of Mount Vernon, with vice regents in almost every state of the Union, have guarded their treasure well, kept it as Washington would have wanted it kept, just as it was on the day he closed his eyes in a room on the second floor of the colonial mansion that stands overlooking the Potomac. It is a shrine for all democracy, a tribute to a great statesman, and always it stands as a living memorial to a woman who cherished a great idea more than she did her health. This woman was Anne Pamela Cunningham, whose last words to the ladies of Mount Vernon were... Ladies, the home of Washington is in your charge. See to it that you keep it the home of Washington. Let no irreverent hand change it. No vandal hand desecrated with the finger of progress. Those who go to the home in which he lived and died wish to see where he lived and died. Let one spot in this grand country of ours be saved from change. Upon you rests this duty. And this is a duty that the women of America have gallantly performed. These women who make history by preserving history. These women who keep tradition and patriotism alive by marking the landmarks of history. These women to whom work and sacrifice, time and effort, money and service are gladly given in one single cause. And that cause, America. Thank you, Patsy Campbell, for a very stirring portrayal. Now here is an important message to the young women of America. You have just heard an interesting story about some of America's gallant women in the past. If you're between the ages of 18 and 34, you're invited to join America's gallant women of the present, who now serve in the WAC, Women's Army Corps, and the WAF, Women in the Air Force. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today and get all the details. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This program featured Patsy Campbell as Ann Cunningham. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.